Hi everyone, it's Tim here with the solar and energy stats for July 2023. So in the interest of keeping this brief, um, uh, you can find the full description of our system down in the uh, in the description below and also in the tour video, which you can uh, find uh, in the video uh, uh, that I'm posting up in the corner there. So without further ado, let's get on with the stats. So here we are back on the Give Energy web portal and you can see for uh, July 2023, we generated 666.62 kilowatt hours. So uh, this was way down on June. Let me uh, just show you what June was like. We actually generated 877 kilowatt hours in June. Uh, and you can see just for, for interest here, um, this very large um, portion of solar to grid uh, in June uh, has been completely destroyed and is now way, way down um, because um, basically there wasn't as much uh, excess solar to, uh, to export back to the grid. Um, and instead, um, what's happened is a lot more of the battery of the uh, of the excess solar has gone into the battery, as you can see from this um, large blue section here. So 205 kilowatt hours went into the battery this month, compared to only 120.5 kilowatt hours in June. And the reason for that is I slightly changed the strategy for charging uh, the battery overnight. So um, in June, I would charge the battery up to 80%, um, mostly to prevent basically the um, the battery discharging into the hot water and the EV if we had that on charge. So by doing that, it meant that the battery was charging at the same time as those other things were were drawing uh, power, which meant that, it, that those things drew from the grid instead of the battery. Um, whereas um, a, an update to the uh, firmware for the inverter subtly changed the way the um, inverter uh, manages the battery basically. So what used to happen was um, once the battery was up to the 80%, if there was still a demand from the EV or the, or, the, or the hot water, it would drain the battery a little bit and then the battery would then go back up to 80% and then it would drain a little bit um, and it would cycle you know, up and down um, for, the, for the remainder of that off-peak period that, that I've got that set up in. Um, however, after the update, um, the battery no longer did that. Once it had reached the charge level, it no longer dropped below that when if there was still demand on the grid. So if I set the battery to charge from uh, two till five in the morning, as long as I'm doing anything else that, I, that needs power in that period, so charging the, hot, the, the EV or heating the hot water, it meant that um, once the battery was up to the, up to the level that I'd defined, um, it would stay there, um, even if there was continuing demand from uh, from other things. So the the battery would um, would not then discharge into the into the hot water or the or the, the EV, which was great. And that meant that I could be a little bit um, more careful with or, or a bit more uh, frugal, shall we say, with charging up the battery overnight. So what I did was I dropped it way way back down to only fifty five percent, so that. Um, uh, the battery was not had a lot more spare capacity to be filled up with excess solar uh, during the day, and that's why this um, blue section here, the uh, the solar to battery, is so much higher in July than it was in June. Um, so that was uh, uh, just a, a, an experiment on my part, just to see how much of a difference that made, um, and the fact that we had much less generation as well um, meant that occasionally there were days where we didn't actually fill the battery completely. Uh, so this is one of the things that happens when you know if you've got um, if you don't. Uh, completely fill up your battery or if you don't fill up your battery very much overnight you do run the risk of not fully charging it uh, by uh, the time that the peak period comes and you want to force discharge your battery so uh, that's um, you know that's something you have to accept and that's fine um, but it did mean that um, there was uh, less of the excess solar went out to the grid more it went out into the battery um, and that, that's fine that's uh, no big deal uh, so let me just show you a couple of these other tabs um, the home demand, um, we uh, consumed 472 kilowatt hours. Now, a, a good fraction of that was obviously the EV and the hot water. So, in fact, the EV this month uh, took a total of uh, 93.6 kilowatt hours, whereas the hot water took 126.9 kilowatt hours. So, that means that the hot water and the EV alone accounted for almost all of the grid to home. Uh, usage. The rest of the uh, the grid to home was um, other stuff that we set running overnight. So um, dishwasher, for example, uh, during that uh, two till five flux off peak period, um, which meant that uh, you know um, the rest of the house was more or less supported by either the battery or the solar. Uh, as you can see from uh, this big chunk of of uh, solar to home, 150 kilowatt hours and 77.6 kilowatt hours um, battery to home. Uh, so that's brilliant. That means that the uh, you know the system is has still got plenty of capacity, and uh, we're generating way more than we consume, which is uh, which is great. 
So uh, let me just show you these other tabs real quick. We've got the battery in. You can see very large fraction solar to battery. That's what we saw before. And um, the grid to battery, this is what we were using to charge the, the batteries um, overnight, which is uh, significantly less than last month. Let me just show you what happened in June. In June, it was um, the other way around. We charged the batteries a lot more than we used excess solar. So let's take a quick look at the uh, battery out tab as well. You can see that we uh, exported 185 kilowatt hours um, from the battery to the grid and 77.6 uh, kilowatt hours was used by the home from the battery. And you can see grid in, we, uh, we uh, imported 320 kilowatt hours and we exported 496 kilowatt hours. So this is significantly lower than June. Uh, in June, we exported 814 kilowatt hours uh, and uh, much, much less um, in July because of that uh, much lower um, levels of, uh, of solar for, for this month. So that's just the way it goes. I don't know uh, what, what's happened to the British summer. So that's just something you've got to accept when you live in the UK. Occasionally you get a, a really nice uh, summer month and occasionally you get a really rubbish summer month. And it just so happened that uh, July was uh, nowhere near as good as June. But oh well, we take it as it comes and uh, let's see how August treats us. So once again, this is the half hourly plot for the totals of July. We've got um, import on the negative axis and uh, export on the positive axis. So you can see here, this is where we're, we're uh, charging the battery and filling up the hot, uh, heating up the hot water and filling the EV overnight during the, um, the octopus uh, flux uh, off-peak period, in, which is shown by this uh, orange uh, import tariff line here. And uh, you can see this is, um, blue line is the export tariff. And we were um, force exporting for well I, I dropped it back a little bit from about two hours halfway through the month from two hours to about one and a half hours so you can see that's why we've got this weird little step here um, and um, because I'm charging the battery a lot less uh, overnight in July compared to June um, that we're now um, exporting a lot less excess solar during the middle of the day so let me show you what uh, what June looked like as a comparison you can see that um, excess solar was exporting uh, for much more of the day compared to, uh, to compared to July so if I switch back to July you can see that's been suppressed a lot more because the battery is now being filled by the excess solar rather than it being exported out to the grid um, but that means I'm importing less during the off-peak period um, and then I can still export some of that uh, from the battery during the uh, the peak period there so what does the rubbish solar generation and the change of strategy mean for the savings that I made this month compared to uh, June? Well, uh, because we imported a lot less than we did uh, last month, our import is down to £57.27, whereas in June it was uh, £73 uh, for the imported power. Um, however, our export was also very much lower than it was in June, so uh, we only earned £123.50 uh, in July compared to £218 in, in June. Um, the standing charge is pretty similar, obviously, it's um, one extra day in July compared to June, so that's £16.22 for the standing charge compared to £15.70 last month, which means the total uh, energy electric bill uh, for July was, uh, for us was minus £50.02. Uh, last month in June it was uh, minus 129 pounds and 31 pence so uh, yeah a significantly different um, uh, energy bill in total but uh, the so the total savings were surprisingly similar um, because um, well in June we were away for the last week of June which meant that um, we heated the hot water less and we didn't charge the EV quite as much um, but the uh, in July obviously we were we were around for the whole month which meant that we used a bit more hot water so if I remove the the EV and the hot water from our um, energy use and then assume that we were on the standard flexible tariff uh, for that and uh, obviously used then gas for, for the hot water and uh, the total flexible electric cost would have been £90.73 uh, this month whereas it, it was uh, £68.31 in June and the um, if obviously heating the gas heating the hot water with gas would have cost us this month 27 pounds 49 um, whereas last month it would have cost us 28 pounds I think that's because the um, gas price has actually come down for July compared to June even though we were actually um, heating more hot water in uh, in July than we did in June but because the cost of petrol has been about the same um, it's still about 140 pence in our local supermarket uh, compared to uh, last month uh, and we drove the EV a little bit more this month than we did in, in June. Uh, the, ironically, that means that the savings for the car 
um, are actually higher. It would have cost us £47.89 in petrol uh, to fill up our car if we still had our Honda Jazz, um, uh, given today's uh, current prices for petrol, uh, whereas last month it would have only cost us £36 um, because we drove the car less. Um, but that means that because um, also the electricity price has come down slightly in July, that means filling up uh, the car, the electric car, um, overnight during that uh, flux off-peak period actually cost us a bit less. So accounting for all of those things together, that means the total savings this month are were actually £212.13, which is uh, obviously a bit less than last month, which was £262.49. Um, but it's interesting that it's um, not more different, despite the fact that the solar generation was so much less. Now, um, because there's this natural hedge where if the electricity tariff goes down, it actually costs you less to fill up your EV, uh, which means that the savings for that part of it, for the electric vehicle, are higher, even though the savings for other things, just using you, you know your standard electricity, um, are a bit lower. So there's that sort of netting effect, which is, which is interesting, I thought. So that's the stats for July, trying to keep it a bit brief. Uh, one thing I should mention is that we didn't use the AC at all in July. It just wasn't hot enough, so um, that didn't get used at all. Um, but the, obviously the rest of our base load and everything else was uh, was nicely covered by um, the solar and the batteries. Let's see how August goes. We should still have plenty more excess solar uh, to help us through uh, uh, the rest of the month and um, we'll see how long that can continue. Uh, if you found this interesting, uh, I hope you uh, subscribe if you're not already and uh, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks very much for watching.